वेलकम लर्नर्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर देवेश एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट स्कूल ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज यू पी राशि टंडन ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी एज यू नो एवरी लेक्चर वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट इन द कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ लास्ट लेक्चर इन विच आई हैव ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन यू द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टेलर today i will try to explain few more important contribution for your understanding i just want to show a list of contributors which we are going to cover in this lecture or maybe next lecture these are the very important contributions regarding the principles of management as you know in last lecture we have covered taylor today we are going to cover contribution of fayol contribution of weber and contribution of elton mayo let's begin with the contribution of fayol as far as the contribution of fuel is concerned he given 14 principles for organization before understanding this 14 principles let's try to understand few points about mr henry fuel henry fuel was a mine engineer in the famous coal mine company known as four chambuls in france at the age of 47 he was made the general manager of his company through his dedication and experience he led the development of the company at its peak in 1918 he retired from the post of general manager but remained the member of the managing committee of the company until his death the first general principle of management was offered for managers by fuel in his book general and industrial management but he pointed out the principle were not cut and dried answer to management problems but simply as guides to the solution of problems he listed 14 principles on the basis of his experience let's try to understand why one by one as i had disclosed earlier these 14 principles for organization the principle number 1 division of work according to fuel standard and more quantity of work can be do need appropriate place on the basis of division of work because only through division of work each employee can get the work of his choice so that employees can work with more dedication maine aapko apne pehle ya dusre hi lecture mein bataya tha hamara parivar bhi ek organization arthat sangathan hai और जहां हम काम करते हैं ये भी एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अर्थात संगठन है मेरे कहने का मतलब क्या हुआ हैंनरी फ्योल साहब ने जो ये 14 प्रिंसिपल्स संगठन के लिए दिए हैं ये हमारे परिवार रूपी संगठन में भी उतने ही महत्वपूर्ण हैं जितने जहां हम काम करते हैं वहां या बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में या किसी भी प्रकार के संगठन में ये चौदह के चौदह प्रिंसिपल्स बहुत महत्वपूर्ण हैं आपको बहुत ध्यान से इसको समझना चाहिए क्योंकि ये कार्यकुशलता को बढ़ाते हैं इट इंक्रीज द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ वर्कर्स सो दैट द प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ वर्कर्स कुड बी इंक्रीज अल्टीमेटली योर डिजायर्ड गोल्स विल अचीव एंड द प्रॉफिट विल द मैक्सिमाइज दैट्स वाई दीज फोर्टीन प्रिंसिपल्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ना कम ऑन प्रिंसिपल नंबर टू authority and responsibility 
Fuel stated that to fulfill its responsibilities, the management must be given more right because in the absence of high level rights, the manager cannot carry out his responsibilities successfully. Principle number three, discipline, anushasha. Under this principle, Fuel stated that each member of an organization should follow the rules, directions and policies of the organization. This law should be imposed to all from high officials to lower level workers. Good leadership and appropriate punishment policies can maintain discipline in the organization. Principle number four, unity of command. According to FUEL, it is necessary for an organization that all employees receive directions from a single official. If any employee will be directed by two or more officers and managers, it creates a situation of revolt in the employees. Thus, there should be a single source of receiving direction so that there is a similarity in direction and there will be no ambiguity to pass the direction to complete the task. As far as principle number five is concerned, it is unity in direction. Fourth was unity of command. Fifth is unity in direction. Fuel stated that to establish unanimity in coordination among different activities, it is necessary that all the direction relating to an objective or goal must be under a single person and a single plan. Principle number six, subordination of individual interest to group interest. In Fuel's view, the managers must maintain coordination or balance between the groups, interest and individual interest. But if there arises some conflict between the two, the group interest must be given priority over individual interest. Bahati Matapun Sangitan ka ye principal fuel dwara diya gaya hai ki agar vyaktigat interest से ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण समूह के इंटरेस्ट का पालन करना हो तो संगठन में समूह के इंटरेस्ट को प्राथमिकता दिया जाना चाहिए बजाय इंडिविजुअल इंटरेस्ट के एज फॉर एज प्रिंसिपल नंबर सेवन इज कंसर्न इट इज ऑन रिमिनेशन टू वर्कर्स कैसा भुगतान किया जाए कार्यकुशल लोगों को बाय दिस प्रिंसिपल Fuel stated that the system of remuneration to workers should be satisfactory and lawfully equitable. The wages of employee must be equitable from the point of view of both the employer and the employees. Thus, the system of wages should be such which not only gives security to the workers but also provides him the benefit of increasing his wages. By extra work. ऐसा भुगतान प्रणाली होनी चाहिए जिससे वर्कर्स जो हमारे लिए काम कर रहे हैं उनको पूर्णतः संतुष्टि प्राप्त हो सके और वो नियमानुसार भी हों नियमानुसार इसलिए क्योंकि समय समय पर भारत सरकार और राज्य सरकारें कितना मिनिमम भुगतान करना चाहिए इसका निर्देश सारे व्या, व्यापारी वर्ग को देती रहती हैं इसलिए कभी भी हमें जो मिनिमम भुगतान है उससे नीचे नहीं जाना चाहिए कम से कम उतना मेंटेन करके चलना चाहिए इसलिए यहाँ पे ये लॉफुल वर्ड का उपयोग किया गया है अदरवाइज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड इज सेटिस्फैक्शन ऐसा भुगतान हमें प्राप्त हो जिससे हम जो कार्य कर रहे हैं हम जो समय दे रहे हैं संगठन को उस समय के सापेक्ष हमें संतुष्टि प्राप्त हो सके कि हमें इतने रुपये या इतने पैसे हमें वेतन के रूप में प्राप्त हुए हैं The eighth important principle is centralization. Decreasing the role of subordinates in decision making in centralization 
increasing their role is decentralization whether decision making is centralized decentralized is a matter of proper proposition fuel felt that managers should retain final responsibility but also need to give their subordinates enough authority to do their job properly principle number 9 is scalar chain in view of fuel to complete any kind of work in the organization on proper time it is necessary that continuous communication is maintained from the higher official to the lower employees and lower employees to the higher officials it could be uh, defined in two way communication so in nutshell scalar chain principle defines the importance of two way communication in the organization point number 10 arrangement to perform an activity in a proper manner it is necessary that all the useful commodities are kept safely and in an organized manner this also applies on the employees of the organization a place for everything and everything in its place will helpful to complete the task in a better manner principle number 11 it is on equality fuel refers that all the high level officials in an organization should treat their subordinates equitably sare ke sare employee ek manager ki dish mein saman hai koi bada chota nahi hai and with politeness so that the differentiation between the higher level and lower level employees and and the environment of cooperation prevails employee should be treated with kindness and justice so that you can get the better output from the employee side principle number 12 stability in the tenure of workers fuel stated that frequent quitting by the employees from the job is mainly due to bad management in organization thus he emphasized on the fact that to whatever extent possible the tenure of the employees must be stable so that they can work without any anxieties the next principle is 13 freedom of initiative freedom of initiative means to prepare a plan on his own and its implementation by the same person the management of an organization must give the opportunity of initiative to even the lowest level employees the management should implement and good suggestions and plans given by their subordinates and increase their morale and the freedom of taking initiative as far as the last principle is concerned it is on spirit of cooperation handy fuel has emphasized on the spirit of cooperation in work in his view an organization must work as a team with full cooperation to install the feeling of cooperation the principle of unity of command must be followed rigidly and the system of working together must be maintained among the employees harmony and union built enterprise strength so friends these are the very important 14 principles for organization if you want to make your organization efficient task oriented result oriented on a profitable manner then you have to implement these 14 principles in your organization next very important contribution is given by the max weber let's try to understand few lines about mr wax weber ji german sociologist and political economist max weber developed bureaucracy theory according to him bureaucracy is the most efficient form of the organization bureaucracy mein ko hum hindi mein naukar shahi bhi kehte hain 
इस नौकरशाही के अंतर्गत मैनेजर्स सुपरवाइजर्स अदर ऑफिशियल्स संगठन के आते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम ब्यूरोसी इज द मोस्ट इफिशियंट फॉर्म ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज अ वेल डिफाइंड लाइन ऑफ अथॉरिटी इट हैज क्लियर रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस विच आर स्ट्रिक्टली फॉलोड वेबर कॉन्सेप्टलाइज ब्यूरोसी इन हिज क्लासिकल कंट्रीब्यूशन इट डेवलप द मॉडल एज अ रिएक्शन अगेंस्ट द पर्सनल सब्जिगेशन निपोटिज्म क्रियालिटी इमोशनल विसिस्ट्यूट्स सब्जेक्टिव जजमेंट विच पास फॉर मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिस इन द अर्ली डेज ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रिवोल्यूशन Weber believed that bureaucracy provides an ideal weapon to harness and routinize the human and mechanical energy which fueled the industrial revolution. Weberian model of bureaucracy is a hypothetical rather than a factual description of how most organizations were structured. it provides an ideal organizational structure that is the one that would be perfectly rationalized and provides for maximum efficiency of operations weber's bureaucracy is utopian in concept and admirable in idea it is characterized by specialization and division of labor let us briefly list down special features of weber's ideal bureaucracy point number 1 a division of labor in which authority and responsibility is clearly defined for each member and is officially sanctioned number 2 offices and positions are organized into a hierarchy of authority resulting in a chain of command three all organizational members are to be selected on the basis of technical qualifications through formal examination or by virtue of training and education officials are to be appointed not to be elected is the next point next one is administrators work for fixed salaries and are career officers next point the administrative officials does not own the administered unit but it is a salaried officials the next point is the administrator is subject to strict rules disciplines and controls regarding the official duties just to complete their task in a disciplined manner weber style is the ideal bureaucracy management style with hierarchy in jobs with career advancements possible so long as you obey the orders of management the bureaucracy approach as far as weber is concerned it emphasizes scientific approach encourages studies to improve work identifies principles to run organizations emphasizes pay as a motivating factor the department of defense is a classical example if you want to see what the weber was saying and how it was implemented as far as bureaucracy is concerned then you have to see the structure of the indian army aap bahut acche se इंडियन आर्मी में पोस्ट पोजिशंस अथॉरिटी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज के जो प्रावधान दिए गए हैं उसके माध्यम से ब्यूरोक्रेसी का एक बहुत अच्छा उदाहरण आप देख सकते हैं कितना बड़ा डिसिप्लिन आर्मी में है कैसे पदों का विभाजन है कैसे अथॉरिटी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी का विभाजन है और कितना नियम कानून से वहाँ किसी कार्य को पूरा किया जा सकता है इसीलिए वेबर ने कहा कि अगर आप आ, हमारी ब्यूरोसी को देखना चाहते हैं तो अपने यहाँ की आर्मी पे नज़र डालें 
However, the problem with this approach is that it is inflexible and makes people feel like they are just part a Gantt machine. It doesn't allow people to be creative and so have the freedom to show their own better way of doing things. This system is purely designed for productivity, not flexibility and creativity. This one is very important line. Pure bureaucracy model ka crux is mein diya gaya hai. मैं फिर से आपको एक बार बताने का प्रयास करता हूँ दिस सिस्टम इज प्योरली डिजाइन फॉर प्रोडक्टिविटी ब्यूरोक्रेसी उत्पादकता को तो बढ़ाती है लेकिन क्रिएटिविटी को नहीं बढ़ाती है क्योंकि ब्यूरोक्रेसी के अंतर्गत आपको जो भी कार्य करने होते हैं वो प्री डिफाइंड होते हैं प्री डिफाइंड रूल्स होते हैं प्री डिफाइंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज होती है वहाँ आप अपना दिमाग नहीं लगा सकते हैं जिसकी वजह से क्रिएटिविटी नहीं आती है इसीलिए बार बार कहा गया है दिस सिस्टम इज प्योरली डिजाइन फॉर प्रोडक्टिविटी नॉट फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी एंड क्रिएटिविटी फ्रॉम द अब डिस्कशन वी कैन ड्रॉ फॉलोइंग फैक्ट्स वेरी क्लियरली नंबर वन एवरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट इज बिग इनफ विल inevitably have the elements of bureaucracy two weber considers idle bureaucracy as a rational solution to complexity on modern problems three bureaucracy is neither good or bad it is a normative model four weber's bureaucracy is the historical benchmark and a syndrome of social change fifth Although idle efficiency, as perceived and expected by Weber, cannot be perfectly attained, the concept provides a prototype that is useful in explaining how most organizations function. Weberian model is an analytical tool contributing directly to the explanation and interpretation of social phenomena. so this is the model of bureaucracy given by max weber as i early explained you in net cell it can increase the productivity it is not flexible it is not creativity so learners i think you can understand very well about the bureaucracy now we will come on contribution of elton may before defining the contribution of elton may i want to explain few lines about mr may elton may has secured fame as the leaders in a series of experiments which became one of the great turning points in management thinking Mayo was also known as the founder of the human relations movement and was known for his research including the Hawthorne studies Hawthorne studies ke naam se hi Mayo ko prasiddhi mili hai aur jab bhi kahin Mayo ki baat kiya jata hai to iska matlab yahi hota hai ki aap se Hawthorne studies ke bare mein kuch charcha ki ja rahi hai the human problems of an industrialized civilization hawthorne studies of the 1930s showed the importance of groups in affecting the behavior of individuals at work mayo's employees rothels burger and dickson conducted the practical experiments this enabled him to make certain deductions about how managers should behave in the city of chicago in america the western electric company where the old and traditional policies of work were prevalent the management failed to motivate the workers to work efficiently 
even after providing better working conditions and higher wages the production of the companies continuously decreased to solve this problem the company invited social scientists of Harvard University of America namely professor George Elton Mayo and his subordinates Elton Mayo performed various experiments in the employees of the electric company situated in Hawthorne from 1927 to 1931 which are known as Hawthorne experiments the conclusions that come forth from these experiments which continued for five years were that the productivity and efficiency of workers does not increase only by improving the working conditions or increasing the wages but the concern shown by the management towards the employees motivation of employees by the management proper leadership by managers total satisfaction of employees etc the result or conclusions derived from the experiments performed by Mr. Mayo and his subordinates are briefly described as follows number one individual workers cannot be treated in isolation but must be seen as members of group this is the beauty of group actually point number two monetary incentives and good working conditions are less important to the individual than the need to belong to a group informal or union unofficial groups formed at work have a strong influence on the behavior of those workers in a group manager must be aware of social needs and cater for them to ensure the employees collaborate with the official organization rather than work against it Mayo's simple instructions to industrial interviewers set a template and remain influential to these days too. Mr. Mayo carried out a number of investigations to look at ways of improving productivity, for example, changing lighting conditions in the workplace. What he found, however, was that work satisfaction dependent to a large extent on the informal social pattern of the work group, where norms of cooperation and high output were established because of a feeling of importance, physical conditions or financial incentives had little motivational value people will form work at workplace with the help of work groups and this can be used by management to benefit the organization dear learners these are the very important principles which we discuss today hopefully ye tino vidwano ke दिए गए सिद्धांत आपको समझ में आए होंगे आप इसे पढ़ने का प्रयास करिए समझने का प्रयास करिए और आपकी फैमिली रूपी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में और जो आप वर्क रूपी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में उनमें इन प्रिंसिपल्स को देखिए ढूंढिए समझिए और इम्प्लीमेंट कीजिए वंस अगेन आई एम हाईली थैंकफुल फॉर योर पेशेंस हेयरिंग इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस फी मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल्स Thank you thank you very much